Tim's on the show today, and we're talking about germinating seeds, step by step, in depth. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener, and Tim. Tim, <laughs> welcome to the OCG Fab Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? Let's just get right into it because we got Tim on the show. Here's what's going on. So we've been talking about the seeds with the comprehensive grow. Let me show you the seeds. Let me show you what's going on. Hold on, Tim. Holy. I'll show you too. We are carefully tending to this uh, tray of dirt. Nothing has shown yet. It's uh, probably gonna water today. It's going well. But one of the things we talked about was, uh, you know, we put the seeds in there, germinating seeds or these sorts of issues. And we're growing the pepper seeds. A lot of people are growing other seeds that are uh, not maybe as easy or as uh, small and then, you know, that are harder to germinate. So there's a lot of ways to go with that. So I wanted to have like kind of a primer with Tim who's been growing all kinds of seeds for all kinds of years how you germinate seeds, not exactly how to, how you do. Sure. Does that makes sense? Uh, so yeah. what, let's say, you know, so we're talking about cannabis seeds here. They're, they're a little different setup than this. They're more of a, you know, they're a harder surface. What's the difference and how do you work with those? What are the different, what are the options? Sure. Uh, so in my experience, 10, 15 years of, of Growing germinating seeds, plants of all different kinds, annual perennials, to mm -hmm. breeding plants, to trees, to herbs, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, every seed has a different density. And that's really what you need to look at, especially if you're cultivating all different types of seeds. Sure. Uh, a lot of these farmers and hemp farmers are other corn farmers or other pepper farmers or other, you know, everybody grows different things. It's pretty similar to each other. Mm -hmm. um, they're based on density. The cannabis seed and the hemp seeds are, are, are more of a dense bigger seed than the pepper seeds, which are more flat and, and paper thin like. Some are like, you know, it seems like some seeds are like this little tiny rod, like celery or something. And then you got these ones that are like a little flat disc. And then you got stuff that's like a, a bean or something that are like kind of a little round circle. Are they structurally different? They are. They are actually they a different absorb, setup. Okay. Yep. And the way they absorb water is very different too. And that's sure. what you need to okay. when you're planting seeds. The, the seeds that are easier to absorb water, the really thin ones, the little needle point ones, the little small seeds, the herb seeds, the even the pepper seeds are paper thin. Yeah. You don't really need to saturate them with water. Sure. It's like it's like taking a piece of paper and dipping a piece of paper into the water or taking a chunk of that piece of paper and dipping that into water. How quick does it absorb water? Sure, you know? sure. Boom. Very yeah. quick. Yeah. Now, we take a, a uh, one inch by one inch by one inch sponge and you put it in the water, it's probably going to take time for it to wake up. Sure, to get all through there, yeah. Material. Okay. So um, the, the, the way you need the way to look at it is like how dense is the seed? If it's paper, I mean, the tomato seeds are very thin and very small usually. Mm -hmm. You don't need to soak them in a solution in a, in, a, in a cup, you know, and then put that into a paper towel and then put that into uh, your soil after you see a taproot come out. Like they're so thin and so, 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 um, so easy to absorb water, you'll, you'll suffocate it. You end up killing it. Oh. So we have to, there's different methods to go about this. The, the paper thin seeds, like the pepper seeds, the, the herb seeds, the leafy green mm -hmm. seeds, mm -hmm. all those, the broccoli seeds, you can put those straight in the yeah. soil, water your soil, and they'll just naturally wick in the water all around them because they can absorb water easier than, say, a corn seed or a bean seed or a canvas seed. Sure, sure, they sure. Okay. Hardy, you know, like, like um, uh, they're harder to absorb water type of seeds. Well, then let's talk about those seeds. With those harder yeah. to absorb seeds, what's is there would you say there's a process that that is set in stone that's how you do it or are there different ways of doing it and what is the what you recommend there's definitely different ways to do it you mm -hmm. can take a cannabis seed it's not cannabis specifically you can take a cannabis seed you can plant it in a soil and you can water the soil and then well you will have germination rates you uh -huh. know you have decent germination rates you may not have the best or perfect germination rates but you you'll it will germinate nonetheless sure um it my preferred way, and this can vary between person to person, but the best way I found is with cannabis, you have about an eight to twelve hour time frame with with the seed becoming um, overly saturated with water. Okay, because uh, I guess what I wanted to say too, just you know, before you go on, is, is like when we're doing pepper seeds, I've got a a, a bag of them, and I'm just throwing them willy nilly. You may only have your one or two or three seeds that you need to make sure that it actually goes. So what you're doing here is a very careful, very precise way of making as sure as you can that, that you do pop a seed. Yes. Okay. It's a, it's a guaranteed qualitative way using our eyes and our senses to make sure that we have life 
and the life is being transferred into the soil before we can't see it until it pops up. Right, right, right. right. Okay, okay, go, go. My method is I do a, I do an 8 to 12 hour seed soak. I do a 24 hour bag transfer, a paper towel, a, a wet paper towel, plastic bag transfer. Okay. And then I plant into my soil. And within that 24 hours total, from soaking to having it in the bag, I can usually see a taproot pop out. Um, and I like to plant after I see the taproot pop out. So my, my, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, keep going. My seed soaking solution was like Dr. Root, SLF 100, and Zeus Juice. So um, you got a little cup of those, little shot glass or whatever, with those mixed with, with some water, I would assume? Yeah, just, uh, I have like, a, yeah, I have like a, um, an ounce of water, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Um, and then uh, I put a little, a little sprinkle of uh, Dr. Root on there, I'll put a little dash of SLF, and I'll put a teaspoon of Zeus Juice in there. And then how mix. long on that? And mix it all up, and then how long on that? Uh, I'm sorry? How long with that? The soap? Oh, I, I put the seeds for 8 to 12 hours. Okay, and um, 4 hours, 24 hours going along the ends, is there problems? I mean, you've, you've pretty much said that that's the time you need to do it in. Yeah, so every, since every seed has different density, there's a, there's a, cer it's, there's a certain time frame you have to okay. the seed reach the saturation point. Uh huh. Because like, like the, the sponge uh, uh, analogy, you put the sponge in it and when it fills up with water, it's not going to hold any more water. In fact, it's going to be logged with water sitting around the water. Sure. And that's kind of seed. So if you go oh, okay. anywhere past 24 hours of a seed, so even some tinier seeds, if you go even to 24 hours of a seed, so if you can drown the seed. And it'll just be too saturated. Done. Done. Okay. So, so I get it soaked. I pull it out. Um, how wet a paper towel? I mean, it's soaked like soak, soak paper towel, or just like damp, or what? What? What's going on there? I uh, I actually pour my shot glass out into the paper towel. That okay. I use. And then and you then fold it over and. I, yeah, I kind of cup it, and I pour it in my hand, and then I let the the water run through. Okay. And then uh, a, a rather saturated paper towel, and I just kind of. Press it in my hands and wring out most of the water. Okay. I only want a couple, like two or three, four or five drops coming out of the paper towel afterwards. So, like, the, the ideal moisture rate is squeeze your paper towel uh -huh. and get like two, three, four, five drops of water. You want to saturate that paper towel to where it's totally filled, but then you want to squeeze it out to where you've got even moisture throughout an area that's over there. And then you put it in a pa and then you put it in a plastic bag. Do you close that bag up or do you leave the bag open or how does that work? I uh, well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. The, 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 um, you know, there's, there's, it's cool. It's cool. The industry is really awesome because like we've been doing this for so long, mm -hmm. but still, even now, people are using different ways for, for even the, the bag technique. So I pulled the paper towel over, I put it in the baggie. You know, I, I zip the paper, I zip the baggie down, take out most of the air. Okay. I used to just lay the baggie in like a, a closet, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Dark place that's not too warm, not too cool, just kind of room temperature. Um, but I believe it was um, I saw on Heroes of the Farm, Pat. Yeah, uh, Pat Fuller, Yeah, uh -huh. from one guy uh -huh. um, out in, uh, out on the Oregon coast, and he's been hanging the baggie at the very uh, top point where where the zipper is at at a diagonal to actually make a diamond. So he just hangs that one one end of the baggie. One okay. Of the baggie. Okay. And gravity, I guess, pulls um, downwards, so like this, the tap roots will just find their way out down. Because because gravity is an amazing nature, and gravity is an amazing thing. Yeah, right? that's smart thinking. Wow. Okay. So, so I've been doing that and actually getting you know better tap root growth before I start planting them into my, my soils. And so after 12, 24 hours, so it's twelve hours in a steep soak. Okay. And then it's twelve to twenty four hours in a bag. Okay, now let me ask you this: Am I just doing twelve to twenty-four hours, like I got a timer going, or am I watching that seed, that root to see how far it's coming out? Is you it interactive? Want to see, you want to be able to see the shell, or see, see the shell, see the shell crack open, uh -huh. and you want to see the tap root, the little pointer root, right, popping out, just popping out, you know, just and, popping out, or or you can that that just tells you, hey, the seed's living. It's so good. Now I can find it. You know, okay, so now we know we have a viable uh, seed here. It's, it's going to go. So now, what do we do? Well, from that point, I take the seed. You know, I should have like a quarter inch to a half inch tap. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I'll take my pot. I'll make a little, little divot. And I'll up, and then that, that Dr. Root SLF combination, I'll just water my entire soil with. Okay, so pretty saturated yeah. at that point. And then you just, then it's just, you're rolling now. Yeah, you're rolling right, that, right, right then. Okay. So, and then from there, you can put them in a dome. I don't recommend it. I like the air to naturally be able to wick with the water that is going to want to evaporate. 
I've um, done both and had good luck with both, but I got it. It's it seems like it, it feels a little scarier when you're doing it without the dome. But it seems like it's it's a little more. You have to be more interactive with it, but you get better result from it. Is that your impression of it? Yeah, and I, I you know, it definitely depends on where you're at. Um, here in Colorado, we're at humidity, 30 percent humidity. So uh -huh. like we usually use domes over our seats, unless you have like a controlled environment where you have fifty percent oh, humidity okay. in the grow room. You know, that, that's where I'm at. I, I condition my grow room because it's so dry here. I'm in an elevated desert. Ah, uh, okay. I, my you know, grow room 50 to 60 percent humidity so i can put my seedlings in there and they won't you know they won't get bone dry the next day because there's no water in the air well you got a humidifier going or something so you've got a controlled environment room yeah i it was relatively yes okay um, uh that controls i can get it i mean i don't yeah. have a humidifier but with all the water and the plants and the soils around you the earth humidifying because you got a lot of stuff going i got you but so someone yeah. that, that's in a, a very dry environment and doesn't have that the the dome may be a necessity to them so we're talking about us it does it's not it's not necessarily the the case for everyone right. and so and then you have like oregon where i wouldn't put a dome over most things in oregon uh -huh. it's like because it's yeah. so humid well that's there. what i because that's what i've experienced so it's not just different strokes for different folks it's also that different environments require different techniques exactly and it's knowing your environment and it's knowing your technique and it's also like when you plant plants outside like you guys in Oregon are getting a different latitude and longitude than me here in Colorado sure. I'm at a different elevation than you guys so there's many different dynamics the, where you're at in your environment uh, plays the most role into the technique that you use I gotcha and we've just naturally developed for what we're working on but we think that's just the way it's done <laughs> yeah I mean we have a general rule of thumb you know and then yeah. you find a guy to get away like like one I did he figured out a good way then he told Pat at Heroes, and he's like, hey, Pat, check this out. Try running your seats like this. Yeah. Pat did that, and Pat posted a video on Instagram. He's like, hey, guys, check this stuff out. Pretty you nifty. Know? So it's, it's very much like we're all sharing with, you, with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The process, you know, possible. But it's also understanding that what works for you may not necessarily work for me because of my environmental condition. Yes. And so I should, like, see what you're doing and not be a poop head about what you're doing. <laughs> no, no, be because I don't know what you got going. Walk a mile in your shoes kind of situation. Yeah, exactly. So just <laughs> just understanding from everybody and the humbleness to understand that, one, I don't know. I've been growing for 10, 15 years, and I still don't know everything. I'm still a student of the plant. Yeah. Student of mm -hmm. nature. Mm -hmm. You know, we all are. So, like, it's important to leave arrogance out the door and to keep an open mind to continue learning and to keep finding out the best ways to do things. Absolutely. So technology's changing. Plants are changing. The world's changing. Everything's always changing, always. So just be flexible and valuable. There's different ways to do things, and there's some ways that we've learned not to do things. But, you know, the future is the future, and who knows what that holds. It's very cool, man. I appreciate you coming on and talking with us about this. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for having me on. Okay, that's the show. I love you. Tim loves you. Come on, Tim. Give him some love. I love you, guys. <laughs> For more information about anything on today's show, go to our website, ocgfam.com. And if you buy anything while you're there, use the code FAMHARVEST. It's going to save you 20%, and it's a lot of fun. The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.